um, project. So yeah, we're going to be, I guess I'll give an introduction into our patho system. So the Scilid vectors and the Candidatus liberobacter solanoserum, which they um, which they carry around. Um, so yeah, I think I've got quite a long presentation, so I'll, I'll speed through it and hope for some questions. Um, so yeah, we'll speak about Liberobacter in general, and then we'll focus in on Liberobacter solanoserum and the psyllid vectors. Um, being an entomologist, I think they're the most important part of the whole pathosystem, but obviously there'll be people that disagree with me. Um, and then, yeah, I'll talk about kind of the work we did leading up to the Calibre project, which made us think, okay, so maybe we should be concerned about LSO in the UK. Uh, and then if I've got time, a brief summary of what we plan to do on, on the Calibre project. Um, so for those that are not entomologists, psyllids are uh, in this group called Homoptera, which uh, it includes your spittle bugs, your leaf hoppers that we, we heard about already in the Xylella project. Uh, also includes aphids, um, scale bugs, that kind of thing. So all of these things are renowned for carrying around plant pathogens and vectoring them to, to, to different plants. Um, and in psyllids particularly, it's mainly um, bacteria that they, that they um, carry around. So again, just to zoom in onto the psyllid, uh, a quick, a brief overview of the life stages. So they go from egg, um, which you can see in the top left there, um, into the kind of immatures we call them, or nymph nymphal stages, which have three, uh, four or five molts. Um, and they're these kind of weird little scaly looking things, uh, really easy to overlook in any um, kind of plant consignments or, or exported plant material. Um, and then the at the actual adults uh, winged and they're, they're also known, uh, jump, known as jumping plant lice. So they have these big um, hind uh, femurs that, that they can use to jump away from predators or, or any threats that they perceive. Um, the most species are very difficult to identify. It requires years and years of training if you're going down the kind of classical taxonomy route. Um, so yeah, as I said, psyllids are renowned for vectoring a few different bacteria, some of the most notable ones or some that, that cause major damage to industries. Uh, you might have heard of Huanglong Bing or citrus greening disease, which is vectored um, by psyllids. It's a bacterium that causes kind of you know, necrosis of the leaves and yellowing of the leaves and greening of the actual fruits or oranges and um, that kind of thing. You can see some of the pictures there of the damage that it causes, and these are responsible for um, high losses in yield across Asia, uh, across America. Um, they're found in Africa and South America as well. Uh, we're also interested in phytoplasmas. We're working on those in, an, in another project, um, and those some some of those species are also infected by by psyllids. Um, but yeah, the the bacterium that we're going to focus on. In caliber is Candidatus liberobacter solanoserum. Um, so it's a phloem limited bacteria, uh, and it's again vectored by a few different species of psyllids across the world. Uh, and we'll speak a bit more about the the distribution of those ac across across Europe, across the world. Um, so yeah, the Bacteriocera cockerelli is responsible or is implicated in the spread of zebra chip. Um, and this causes yellowing and reddening of the leaves in potatoes. And it also causes this kind of dark striations of the tubers where it gets its name zebra chip. So once you fry the tubers, the, dark, uh, the darkness intensifies and makes them unmarketable. Um, so this is responsible for uh, um, mainly diseases in, in solana uh, solanaceous crops, so potatoes, tomatoes, um, peppers, that kind of thing. Uh, we also have some psyllids that vector uh, LSO to, to carrot as well, and it's similar, similar kind of symptoms we see in carrot, reddening and yellowing of the leaves, and the actual act of the psyllid feeding causes um, the, the leaves to curl up, and, and yeah, it leads to loss of yield in, the, in that uh, respect as well. So this is the kind of... Oh, the computer's doing its own thing. Um, this is the dis distribution of the different vectors across the world. Um, and at the moment we use a system, we call them the different LSO types, haplotypes. So the different genetic groups basically, which associate with different plant hosts, different psyllid hosts as well. 
Um, so LSO was first found in Bacteriosera coccarelli, and it was these A and B haplotypes which have, have been responsible for damage. So the zebra chip damage you saw earlier in, in potato plants. Um, that little fella made its way over to New Zealand as well and caused yeah, uh, millions of, uh, of dollars worth of damage in, in the kind of solanaceous industry. So uh, tomatoes, peppers, that kind of thing within green, uh, glass houses. Uh, luckily, we don't get Bacteriosera coccarelli in Europe uh, at the moment. Uh, in Europe, we have a kind of more complex vector host uh, system and uh, a few different haplotypes there, which are mainly associated with apiaceous crops. Um, so carrot, parsley, celery, that kind of thing, parsnip. Um, in I guess in kind of Mediterranean area, you, the main vector is uh, Bacteriosera trigonica. Whereas we start further, moving further north, um, Trios apicalis is responsible for more of the damage in kind of Scandinavia area. At the moment, we do get Trios apicalis in the UK. We found it in a small, small number of samples in our um, suction trap monitoring, but it doesn't seem to be causing a problem. Um, and there's various different haplotypes. So I won't go into the nuances of those now because I don't have time. Um, but there's a few different haplotypes that, that infect other hosts. And we're also finding new haplotypes from some of our work as well. So yeah, our main concern is incursions of these major vectors into the UK, um, especially Bacteriosera coccarelli, which will, which, uh, will cause um, huge damage to the, the potato industry. Um, and things like Bacteriosera trigonica coming from um, coming from Europe and Trios apicalis, which could again cause millions of, of, of pounds worth of damage in the UK carrot sector. So in the Calibre project, we're mainly focusing on um, these carrot psyllids that could that could potentially cause damage to carrot crops. But we're also keeping an eye, obviously, on the on the potato side of things as well. Um, so yeah, some previous projects that we've been involved in, um, have, we've been monitoring solid diversity across Scotland and Europe, and now we're uh, broadening that out to the UK in general. We've been building databases, DNA databases, to identify certain psyllid species um, to help with identif identification of, of the major vectors, I guess. Um, and yeah, we've been designing specific diagnostic tests, so QPCR tests for um, yeah for some of the main vectors. So, Bacteriosera coccarelli, we, we published that one recently, uh, and we're yeah working on Bacteriosera trigonica and uh, Triosa apicalis as well. So yeah, just quickly in the UK, we found um, initially found LSO in a new psyllid species or a species that we hadn't found it in before, or had never been found in before. Uh, and this was Trios anthrisci. So it's very similar to Trios apicalis, the carrot psyllid that causes all the problems in uh, Scandinavia. Um, so we wanted to build up a bit more of a picture of its distribution uh, and LSO distribution across um, Scotland to begin with. And obviously in the Calibre project, we've, we've extended that out to the UK. Um, so we, yeah, a number of field sites across Scotland, we surveyed for psyllids and we surveyed for LSO, um, psyllid um, and the psyllid plant hosts as well. So Trios urticae was the most abundant psyllid. This is, uh, LSO is found in Trios urticae, but it mainly feeds on nettles and psyllids are quite specific on, on which they, uh, on plants which they feed. Um, so that was found across Scotland, and it was always positive for LSO to uh, varying levels of, 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 of um, percentages there. And that was haplotype U. At the moment, we don't really know much about haplotype U, but it seems like it's confined to nettles. So I guess unless you're a nettle farmer, you're not really too concerned about um, haplotype U. Uh, but I guess there are people that farm nettles. <laughs> um, Yep, so Trioza and Thrisky, we only ever found it in one kind of isolated area up in the north of Scotland, up in Elgin. And that is 100% of uh, samples tested were infected with um, LSO haplotype C. So it's the haplotype that is associated with disease in, in carrots and other apiaceous crops. Um, but yeah, it just seems to be uh, segregated up there in, in, in 
the north of Scotland. Another interesting species that we that we collected along uh, during our surveys was Craspedaleptus subpunctata, uh, and this one actually we we kind of sequenced the haplotypes of LSO that that has, and that that actually revealed two new haplotypes that we've um, just published now. Uh, we've called those CRAS1 and CRAS2 because the kind of alphabet system wasn't really working very well. So those are just different um, genetic types of, uh, of LSO. And those are closely related to a haplotype that was found recently in carrot in, in Finland as well. Um, uh, and we, yeah, we also collected plant samples as we went along. Uh, and we found that was the first finding of haplotype C in cultivated carrot and various other um, other hosts. Um, so yeah, the next steps are kind of do, to do transmission studies with these some of these potential vectors to see if they can feed on and transmit to carrot. We've done some prelim preliminary stuff with um, Trizer and Thrisky, uh, and it can reproduce on carrot but it seems to be it's not an efficient vector so it, it can pass lso to the carrot but it's quite weak at doing doing so uh, at least in the the limited experiments we've done so far uh, and we find these kind of symptoms in our insectary on cow parsley we haven't seen symptoms on carrot yet from uh, trios and thrisky feeding um, so yeah, I'll just quickly go through what we intend to do on the caliber. I think I've got a few seconds. But, um, so yeah, work package one will be looking at um, whole genome sequencing of LSO haplotypes and um, important psyllid vector species to do some comparative genomics to see if there's any difference between um, yeah, psyllids that can transmit LSO and psyllids that can't transmit it. Uh, and difference between different LSO haplotypes as well. And we'll be de developing a few more diagnostic tools for yeah, identifying psyllid species and haplotypes. Um, work package two will continue the work we've been doing in monitoring LSO diversity. Um, and work package three will be monitoring the psyllid diversity and distribution across the UK. So we've got a few, um, four, four or five field sites um, or areas across the UK that we'll be looking looking into, uh, collecting psyllids and plants and testing for LSO. Uh, work package four is the transmission work that I've mentioned already. So can these potential vectors actually pass to important uh, crops or are they merely just carrying LSO around with them? Um, so we'll do a few plant choice and EPG behavioral, exp behavioral experiments. Uh, and then work package four is the kind of risk assessment where is it LSO likely to come from in the UK it, um, in terms of importing plants um, in, and in terms of modeling land use uh, and the effect on the potential for LSO transmission. Um, so yeah, that was a bit rushed, but that's kind of what we plan to do for the caliber project i guess you can find more on the bpd website and you can find those publications as well um yeah so a whole range of people to thank there but yeah i guess that's me done